And I told him if I just get even close, remotely close, I'm just driving right to the side of him. So I still owe him one. And, uh, you know, it's it's been fun. Um, oh. What happened? Is that is that Kyle Larson? Kyle, <laughs> Kyle just turned your internet off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he kicked me out for a second there. Uh, All right, three timer. I say three timer, three Peter, three time champions. That's three times in a row, Brad Sweet for your World of Outlaws here in the Freak Nation. And Brad, do you want to get the the Kyle Larson controversy <laughs> out of the way first? <laughs> I mean, it's it's weird that it's still even a, a controversy because it was so long ago. But uh, you know, I don't think I think it's one of those things where we're just always going to agree to disagree. He's going to just not see it his, or he's not going to see it my way, and. I refuse to see it his way. So at the end of the day, he won the race. Uh, he got the money. Uh, he had a, he had a unhappy family and an unhappy car owner. So, you know, I'm not sure he really won, but, uh, you know, I just, I don't think we're ever going to agree on the, the outcome really. Well, let's share with the freak nation. Some of that interview with Kyle, when he was talking about, uh, you and him getting after it in the trophy cup. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. All right, here we go. What if you and Brad Sweet got back at the Turkey Night Grand Prix and it was down to the two of you and you, one of you guys, I mean, you were just side by side. One of you guys had to take the other one out to get the win. How bad would Thanksgiving dinner be with your wife the very next day? <laughs> well, it's happened. So uh, <laughs> Trophy Cup uh, 2012 or 13. Um, and we, it, it gets brought up all the time. And, and the Sweet family are the only ones that think it was my fault. But uh, <laughs> you can you can find the race online somewhere. But anyways, Trophy Cup, you know, whatever. I didn't even need to win the race to win the event. And uh, But, you know, it's my girlfriend at times, brother leading, and, and I want to beat him. Um, so I threw a slider on him into one and two and cleared him and he got to my inside down the back stretch and was actually ahead of me. And then he, he kind of did like a slow slide job across three and four. This is coming to the checkered. And, uh, I was like, okay, there's gonna be enough room to get around him. And so I squeeze around and we make contact off of four, but you know, he hits, he hits me and, uh, <laughs> he flips doesn't make it a checkered flag. My car is destroyed. I barely limp across the line to win. And, um, yeah, Brad was obviously mad. Kaylin barely said good job to me. Jennifer, Jennifer, the grandma, who she, she's the one who's been walking out of the door. Uh, she's so upset about it. Oh. But I guess they're the only ones that are upset about it. Everybody else said, oh, it's Brad's fault for sure. Everyone else I know says it's Brad's fault. Okay, Brad Sweet, your side of the story, please. I think he explains it pretty well. Just typically, you know, when you when you kind of are ahead of the guy and you're, you're sliding up in front of them, you know, typically if they hit you, they, they're the ones that wreck. So it was a really unique crash that he was able to, you know, that I was the one that ended up flipping. And he was he still destroyed his car, you know, but then he, you know, they kind of, it was like a controversy, you know, like they should have probably just thrown the red flag. Maybe I was flipped over and turned four, and they kept the green out and he limped across the line and the crowd went crazy. So it was definitely a show, but um, you know, I don't know. I, I feel like the guy behind you is, is going to be the guy that runs into you. So um, I always felt like he could have turned under me. Uh, you know, he, he didn't necessarily make it through without hitting me. So, um, you know, I don't know. It's, it's a racing thing. I mean, I think, uh, I certainly will try to get him back at some point if I ever get the opportunity and the right opportunity. I, I would definitely like to, to get him because he did spin me out at Chili Bowl a couple of years ago in the race of champions. And I told him if I just get even close, remotely close, I'm just driving right to the side of him. So I still owe him one. And, uh, you know, it's it's been fun. Um, oh. What happened? Is that is that Kyle Larson? Kyle, <laughs> Kyle just turned your internet off. <laughs> Yeah, he he kicked me out for a second there. Uh, yeah, he's he, it's it's been fun because we didn't know each other as well back then. So uh, you know, there's always you know I was I was kind of mad, but he was just kind of getting to you know starting dating my sister and stuff. So uh, you know, obviously all that stuff's behind us now, and and uh, we, there's kids involved, and our kids love each other, and we do a lot of fun things together. So 
uh, we still joke about it, but uh, I don't think there's as hard of feelings as there once was. So when you have a meeting over this business relationship at Silver Dollar Speedway, is that going to go okay? Or are they going to have to have uh, the two of you put on gloves and throw in, <laughs> throw in the, cage, the cage match to see who won the race? I don't think he wants that. You know, I don't think he wants to get in a, a fight. You know, uh, driving's one thing, but fighting's a whole nother thing. So, um, yeah, it's 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 cool. It's uh, it's fun that we're doing business together. Uh, you know, he's really passionate about racing, and so am I. So it's it's cool. It's um, you know, we'll we'll settle it one day. I I I will get the last laugh. I I will guarantee that. Ooh, <laughs> Dems fighting words. Ooh. Okay, I like how you said the kids love each other. Of course, you're talking about the cousins. Who's the cooler uncle, you or Kyle? I would say me for sure. Um, Kyle, he's he is so busy all the time. You know, uh, with the NASCAR stuff, and you know, we do get to do some fun stuff at home. Um, you know, but the kids just, they just love each other. Um, oh, you know, so my daughter just loves Owen and Audrey and every time they get together, it's a lot of fun. So, um, you know, I think Owen and me have kind of a special bond, just him being like the first, uh, first one. And, and, you know, I was always uncle Brad and they always come to the races and he sees uncle Brad. So there was just kind of something there. Um, you know, we, we spent a lot of time together so owen's got red hair like me and a lot of energy like me so we just kind of uh we just kind of get along really well you can give them free shopping trips through napa auto parts as well kyle can't do anything like that <laughs> yeah exactly he's yeah he's got hendrickcars.com but yeah we got napa auto parts so uh you know we'll be helping owen out along the way for sure he's uh He's retired from racing, though. He he He's more into baseball right now, which I think is really mm. cool. I think, um, you know, I hope he can kind of enjoy his childhood and do whatever he wants to do. Because I think there's a lot of pressure uh, for a six-year-old to be, you know, this purebred racing driver. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, that's probably not exactly the right thing for a six-year-old. Well, how did you do it, Brad Sweet? I mean, you started early and you're, you're like you said, you're very passionate about racing. But that's been in your blood from almost day one. Yeah, I think I started when I was eight. I think uh, one great thing about uh, myself growing up was that, uh, you know, I didn't have any pressure. We didn't have, you know, uh, I didn't have a dad that was, you know, a NASCAR champion and a and an uncle that was a World of Outlaw champion. So, um, you know, I just was kind of at the racetrack like all the other kids. And then, uh, you know, sometimes we didn't go to the races. We we had a pretty normal childhood. We We would play baseball and and did all of the other sports, swim team, and, and lots of other things. But, you know, uh, I definitely just was always, you know, racing was always number one for me. Uh, but I felt like my parents did a good job just kind of letting me navigate and find that, you know, out myself. And then when the time came later in life, you know, to make the decision to be a full-time racer and chase that dream, you know, then uh, they supported me and, and uh, tried to help the best they could. But, uh, you know, then it was kind of, you know, on me to, to make it happen and, and go through all the trials and tribulations to get to this point. We'll get you back to the interview in just a little bit. Have you heard about Lucas Brake Parts Cleaner? Lucas Brake Parts Cleaner is made of the highest quality components, giving you superior performance and leaving no residue. How do you apply this? You apply Lucas Brake Parts Cleaner liberally to the parts that need to be cleaned. You'll eliminate brake fluid, grease, dust, and dirt components. We know a little bit about that here in the desert, I'd say. And basically what that does is that makes you a happy driver because now your brake noise is gone and your performance has gone up. Boom. All right, let's get back to the interview now. World of Outlaws, three-time champion. You're in some tall cotton with Steve Kinzer and Donnie Schatz. <laughs> it's a World of Outlaws, your destination. You're happy there. There's no NASCAR Cup. There's no IMSA sports cars in your future. <laughs> You know, um, I did some NASCAR stuff, and, and I, I would say that that was my dream at, at that point in my life was to try to make it in NASCAR. Um, you know, and then, uh, you know, things just didn't play out that well for me. Uh, definitely found my home at the World of Outlaws, and, uh, you know, that's definitely become, you know, a huge part of my life and, and um, you know, have zero aspirations to do anything else at this point, you know, other than promote some racetracks and, you know, do some other business stuff. But as far as racing a car, I feel like, uh, there's just nothing better than a wing sprint car right now. Um, you know, we have tons of fans, the sport's growing, you know, I'm in a, in a great position to 
compete for championships and it doesn't matter what form of racing you're in it's, it's always going to be hard to be at the very top of whatever that form is and uh you know get yourself in those positions so it's something that i'm very proud of that we were able to you know kind of climb that mountain you know all the different directions that we went but to get to the point where we're you know competing for world of outlaw champions and wins night in night out year after year um you know it's pretty special so we're definitely gonna uh you know kind of cherish the moment here and and try to stay uh you know try to keep accomplishing what we're what we've been doing uh, these last three years for sure so the outlaws drivers teams travel all over the country i think you raced almost 80 races this year and a lot of the guys that i've talked to in the past have passions they chase down uh, roller coasters. They chase down uh, cheeseburgers. They chase down a little bit of everything. What do you do when you're traveling to 80 races around the country? Do you have any place you like to stop and sort of unwind sometimes? I'm a little different than everybody. Um, I, I, do, I try to come home a lot more than a lot of the other the drivers. Um, you know, I don't have a motor home out on the road. Uh, you know, it kind of keeps me, you know, freed up to kind of do those things. And, you know, so I'll shoot home and uh, spend lots of time with my wife and daughter. Uh, you know, I'm really into other business ventures. So, you know, once we're done racing, you know, we'll have those other avenues to kind of go down. So, um, you know, we do see a lot of cool spots, we meet so many cool people. Um, there's really not too many parts of the United States that I don't know about that I haven't been, you know, somebody in and, you know, it's kind of neat to understand, you know, the lay of the land as well as we do. Um, you know, I don't think a lot of people, you know, in the United States realize, you know, how diverse it is, how, you know, different, how many different areas are, you know, cool that, that aren't necessarily, uh, you know, on the map or, you know, they're, they're small or, or they're unknown, you know. So we, we find a lot of those cool spots, those hole-in-the-wall restaurants, those hole-in-the-wall bars, um, you know, those nice little towns that, that are quaint and small and, you know, so that's that's been fun, obviously, to, to kind of, you know, learn and see all that. What's the one hole-in-the-wall restaurant that <laughs> Brad Sweet has been to? And uh, the next time he's in within driving distance, he's going to make sure he goes to again. Oh, man. Uh, that's tough. There's some so many good ones. I mean, if you want, like, real hole-in-the-wall, uh, there's this place in um, Dodge City, Kansas. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name because it's uh, the exact name of the restaurant, but it's just, I mean, you can tell it's been there forever, hole in the wall, breakfast spot. So I typically don't eat breakfast before the races, but, um, you know, it was just something I found kind of by accident. Every every time we go to Dodge City, Kansas, I go there. And if you've never been to Dodge City, Kansas, it's mm -hmm. pretty out in the middle of nowhere there. <laughs> You typically don't eat breakfast before the races. Wait a minute, you guys race at night. What what is your day consisting of before you get out there on the track? Um, you know, it's uh, there's my daughter there. Yeah. She uh, hi Savannah. <laughs> <laughs> <You're still> uh, laughing. <laughs> my day is, um, you know, I try to have a good lunch. Obviously, I try to sleep in because we go so late at night, uh, true. and. Um, you know, so like our hours to perform are kind of different than a lot of other people. So, you know, kind of getting up a little later, you know, and having lunch and then obviously something that, you know, won't upset your stomach is kind of, you know, what I'd go after. And then you really don't go to the track till two or three o'clock. You know, so there's a lot of downtime in our form of racing. And that's that's a hard thing to kind of get used to is, you know, you kind of got to be ready to perform at six or seven o'clock. You know, so that's a lot of hours. Typically, you're, you know, a lot of people are winding down or or whatever they're they're doing so you know managing all that time you know figuring out how to kind of be awake from you know like your peak hours or six to you know midnight basically so we don't go to bed a lot of times till one two in the morning so you know just getting those hours kind of you know getting your your head right around all that type of stuff so what what we get focused on and you know try to get workouts in along the way and you know just uh be in shape be the best that we can be when we uh when we hit the track so clearly not getting at least eating advice, workout advice maybe, but not eating advice from your fellow Napa champion, two-time funny car champ, Ron Caps. He tries to eat as little as possible on race day, but just enough to be able to beat the ass of the guy next to him in the next round. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I would say I'm pretty similar. I don't eat until after the races are done. Uh, I only eat lunch, and typically it's, 
you know, something very light, like a sandwich or just something that, you know, is not going to upset your stomach. It's just, it's hard to feel really full, you know, and get out and, and you know, basically exercise. So, uh, you know, just making sure that we don't, you don't have any stomach issues or, you know, kind of that feeling of being too full or any of that stuff. That's, that's terrible. And it can really slow you down and, and kind of throw your mind off a little bit. Seriously. Three time world of outlaw champion. We're talking about freaking diets and stomachs <laughs> and talking about food. microbiome. <laughs> when, when, when I know when I know Rachel's on the other side of the camera going, you better get your home, get home. You bastard. You got to take care of that little girl that's rolling around here. Right. Rachel, yeah. you can get on camera if you want to and, and debate this. <laughs> she's, she's back. She's back laughing, but she's shy. So no, she's uh, she knows I'm pretty serious about all the all the right. stuff that, that goes into because it's you know it's your whole night can get thrown off if you if you do one thing wrong, you know. So it's as much as people probably don't realize there's a lot of athleticness or however you say that involved. Um, you know, you, oh heck yes. You're definitely your heart rates up, and there's nerves involved. So just you know, kind of being prepared on race days, I think, sure. is a is a big part of it all, really. Hey, was it tough for you with Chase Elliott being a Napa sponsored driver and your brother in law Kyle Larson going for the championship? How do you root for both of those guys, or was it all Chase Elliott? <laughs> <laughs> uh it was uh i actually just cheered for kyle to be honest with you i i like chase but uh you know kyle's uh, a lot closer you know it's a family member basically at this point and um you know we we definitely do a lot of stuff together business stuff so fr he's a friend he's a brother-in-law so i think uh you know we we as a family we're all cheering uh, pretty hard for kyle so it was a pretty special year for him Mm -hmm. And uh, now he's got his first one. We probably won't cheer for him as much. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. And you know a little bit about this with your time in the Xfinity Series, the Truck Series, and NASCAR. How come it translates for some drivers and some drivers it doesn't to go from sprint cars to stock cars on the track? What What is the thing that's – not many do Tony Stewart, Kyle Larson, and, you know, it, it falls off from there. What, where's the, where's the drop-off? Yeah, I mean, you're seeing some guys, uh, you know, I think however maybe you're brought up, uh, you know, how quick you get on asphalt, um, you know, do you have, you know, freakish talent like Kyle, obviously. I mean, there's there's a lot of, you know, different aspects that go into, you know, being successful. Which team did you get with? Mm -hmm. You know, how much uh, testing did you get? You know, it was it used to be a lot different. You know, you used to get a lot of testing to try to figure it out before you'd actually go on the racetrack and race you know when i kind of came in uh you know i was a little bit late to the game uh, i was 24 uh before i got like kind of my first chance and uh, you know i'd never even been on pavement until i was 22 i think some of that stuff just uh, made the learning curve a little harder for me um i was always in a, a team with like a part-time schedule so i was still you know, doing a lot of other racing, you know, the focus was never strictly on, you know, the truck series or the Xfinity series. It was always, you know, you get eight races, you know, spread out. So um, I think there was lots of different things that, that kind of made me not have the success I wanted in NASCAR. Um, you know, but that's just the, that was just the business. That's the game that we, that we play. And I, I definitely am, you know, forever grateful I got the opportunity. Um, you know, a lot of people never get that opportunity. So mm -hmm. that's something at least I, I got. And then, you know, basically I kind of think everything worked out, you know, for the better for me. I don't think I was ever going to be, you know, maybe necessarily a, a cup champion. Um, those cars just didn't necessarily fit my driving style. And, you know, I really like uh, the way sprint cars drive. There's a lot of finesse involved, a lot of throttle control, uh, just a lot of fun, a lot more fun uh, to me. Um, you know, there's no engineers, there's, you know, money can't buy speed, basically. It's, uh, oh we all have the God, same stuff and, and you go out there and you, and you, it's kind of a, a, there's a huge human element, you know, that kind of separates, uh, you know, the, the top guys, you know, from guys that aren't as good. So I'll, I've, I've invested enough time now that not a lot of people have what I have. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty excited to keep rolling with it and, and proud of that. And keep rolling. Obviously you're going to be doing what is, the goal, or is there even a goal? You've accomplished so much, whether it's Kings Royal or Knoxville Nationals or you name it, three-time consecutive champion. Only three guys can say that in all of the world of outlaws. There's truly only 
what, six multi-time champions in the 40 plus years of the series. It's absolutely incredible what you are doing now. So what is next? Do you want to just rack up the championships, rack up the number of wins besides silver dollar, be a multi-time track owner? <laughs> what uh, is you know, the Brad Sweet goal? Honestly, I think for me, uh, you know, I'm in this position, you know, I worked my whole life to get to this position and, um, you know, it takes a lot, a uh, great car owner, a uh, great engine builder, you know, then great mechanic and, and uh, crew chief and tire guy, everyone's sticking together. So as long as we can kind of all stick together and we're, and we're winning, uh, I want to keep going as long as that happens. Uh, you know, possibly, you know, that could be three years, that could be five years, that could be seven years. You, you really don't know in racing, nothing's guaranteed. So, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to say that I'm going to bail when we're in our prime and when everybody works so hard to get to this point, you know, we're having the success. I don't want to necessarily walk away from it, but, but I do think that I, there is a next chapter for me. I do think about that a lot. Um, you know, I, I do think that, um, you know, you get to a point in your career that, that maybe you don't have the, the passion and desire, or, you know, maybe you don't want to do the whole world of outlaw schedule, you know, the grind of it all. So, you know, there's lots of different things that, that cross my mind along the way. Um, you know, are you going to, you know, go to a part-time schedule? Can you be as competitive as you want to be at that? I don't know. So I think you just kind of focus year after year, you know, and then keep, uh, you know, I started Kane Screen Print with Casey. So we own a screen print company uh, in North Carolina together. Uh, we're doing this Silver Dollar Speedway uh, with Kyle and another friend out here, Colby Copeland. So, you know, there's a, uh, we're definitely kind of doing things along the way and then, you know, see where the racing takes us and, um, you, you just never know uh, what tomorrow is going to bring and, you know, let alone another year. So uh, hopefully we can take our Napa Auto Parts, you know, car and, and get another championship and get another Knoxville Nationals and get another Kings Royal or, you know, whatever it may be. Uh, we're obviously going to try our hardest, but, um, you know, I don't I don't necessarily have a set goal or, you know, uh, a set, you know, anything in my head. That's that's for sure. So Brad Sweet, you've got three consecutive championships in Outlaws now. You're not going for twenty or plus. <laughs> face down. Steve yeah, I don't, I don't. Record? I don't think Steve Kinzer. I don't know how Steve Kinzer was out on the road for twenty years. It's just uh, <laughs> mind blowing to me. And even Donnie Shots, you know, he's been out on the road for twenty five years. He's got ten Outlaw championships. You know, so it's it's pretty crazy those guys what they were able to accomplish just me getting a small taste you know of what that takes and you know what it feels like it's uh you know feels like everybody's always chasing you coming after you you know everybody's trying trying hard to get to this this point so you know you're, you have to be at a very high level at all times uh to to stay on top of the mountain so it's definitely doesn't get any easier um you know so that's that's pretty crazy that Steve was able to win 20 of them. He was uh, obviously the greatest sprint car driver that uh, that we've ever seen, um, you know, with the World of Outlaws. So uh, I don't think any of his records will be broke in our, in our lifetime, but um, certainly not by me. Um, I, I think I'm very satisfied, you know, if my career ended tomorrow. I don't think I left anything on the table that, that was, you know, all my goals have been achieved. So at this point, just – you know, like you say, just kind of racking them up or, you know, when we can keep the team together, the sponsor aligned, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's hard to get to this position. So you just got to be grateful for it. And, you know, uh, I think it's hard to ever, you know, stop and be like, holy cow, we won three because, you know, you're still right in the middle of it. You feel like, you know, it's 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 on the number four now, you know, you're going to try for number four and then, you know, hopefully you get that. And then, you know, I think at the end of your, your career, you can look back and think, wow, that was that was pretty you know, awesome what we were able to accomplish, but it's pretty hard to, to stop and, you know, kind of pinch yourself right now. Some football coaches, Brad Sweet, three-time World of Out, three consecutive World of Outlaws championships. Some football coaches say that uh, they remember the losses more than they remember the wins. Uh, you had a lot of wins and championships. It, it, does that happen to you? You remember the losses more than the wins? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, like we lost the Kings Royal with a flat tire this year, and that, that one really stung. Um, 
you know, and, and we haven't won a Kings Royal in the last, I mean, an Oxville Nationals in the last few years when, you know, since we won in 2018. So, you know, I think it's just, you always want that feeling, you know, like anything, once you feel, you know, you get that satisfaction of winning those big races and accomplishing goals, it's always, it always feels unsatisfying if you, you know, don't win. So that's the hardest part, you know, when you go to those big races, you know, fortunately enough for us, we've been able to win the three championships that we've been in contention for. So that's been very fortunate that we didn't have to, you know, go through that yet. But, you know, I'm, I'm assuming at some point in my career, you know, we'll have a battle that, that we don't come out on top, um, you know, but that's just part of it. And, uh, you know, we'll, uh, it, in sprint car racing, the one, the one thing that's great is there's 90 nights. So, you know, you're going to have some bad ones, but as long as you can kind of turn it around and, you know, there, there's always a race tomorrow or the next day, it seems like. Well, you know, we go back a few years, Brad Sweet, three-time World of Outlaw champion. Is Rachel still in the in the kitchen? Does she want to see you in your early 20s? <laughs> She saw me in my early 20s, but yeah, she's gone now. Oh, well, okay. Well, you, it, it might be a good thing, given the fact that uh, some things we were talking about. You ready for this? You and Brady Baker when you were running for Mopar? You ready? Sure. All right. Oh, no. You're meeting the ladies. Of course, Brad Sweet joins us, ladies and gentlemen. When, you, when, you, when you're meeting the ladies at the track and you got the nice rig and so forth, what's the first thing you show them? You show them the car or do you show them... You know the lounge area or the computer setup. What are you, what are you showing, I just, Brad? Usually, I just go straight for the lounge. <laughs> <laughs> Brad likes the tactic, but I really like her. <laughs> I really, really like her, Brady. Uh, and where does that get you? Uh, usually, I don't know. We don't. <laughs> we don't. It's not. It's probably not as bad as it, as it sounds. But we just he he decided to let him bring the girls around, and then I just mess with him the whole time. <laughs> Me and Brady, we're both married with kids now. Right. right. We, don't, we, don't have, we don't have those conversations anymore. <laughs> Sounds like you were you were trying to mess with Brady back in the day. No, yeah, you he don't was, really want to date that little, guy. He was always a little younger, younger than me, and uh, but we had a lot of fun. Me and Brady, um, you know, those were some good years, and we built a really good friendship uh, over those course of those couple of years. So we stay in touch, and he's a four time USAC champion now. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's pretty cool. That um, you know, we we both you know have had all the accomplishments uh, you know that we've had uh, from back in the day. That 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 doesn't seem like that long ago, but it was pretty long ago. Hey, of all the drivers that are out there now, who's the first one that you might want to drop the gloves with and go after him? <laughs> Why are you always looking for a fight? I know, seriously, <laughs> seriously, Kenny. <laughs> Which I don't Honestly, think Kenny's ever fought anybody. I, Whoa. <laughs> I think that we all have our run-ins, but I think there's a lot of respect, you know. Right. Um, yeah, you know, there's there's no driver that that I don't, you know, at least have respect for getting out there and trying. And you know, we we know in the course of 90 nights, uh, out of all the laps we race against each other, you're gonna you're gonna have some run-ins. I'm sure people, you know, say that they want to beat me up at times, but at the end of the day, I think um, you know we're, we're all just trying really hard. So sometimes those things happen. Well, I'm, I'm always, I always want to fight Brian Brown when I see him. I mean, I mean doesn't everybody He's just want to fight Brian? one of the nicest Brian? guys. Are you kidding? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've had my run-ins with Brian, but, like, at the end of the day, I said, he's uh, he's trying hard. Uh, he's, he's got a successful team, and he's doing a lot of great things uh, around Knoxville area. So, uh, we've had our run-ins, though, for sure. Um, you know, I try to – I'm pretty low-key. I don't, I don't get in a lot – I try to stay out of the, the drama, for sure. Who's someone you would definitely want to buy a beer for that maybe in the past you haven't shared a beer with? Someone you really respect. They could be older than you or or at your peer level. I think Donnie Schatz is someone that I just, I feel like I have a lot of respect for. Um, you know, I wouldn't say that we've never had a beer together, but, you know, I, I do think that we could spend more time together, uh, you know, at some point in our lives. And he kind of, I feel like he's the one that kind of pushed me to this level and made me you know, work harder. So there's just a lot of respect there from me to him. Uh, you know, the way he races, you know, the way he was able to win. And, and when I came to the sport, he was the guy, you know, you had to try to beat Donnie shots. And, you know, so it just took everything in my whole body to figure out how to, you know, working out to, you know, just my mind, get my mind right. So, uh, you know, just someone like him is just uh, would be someone because we've been fierce competitors but there's a lot of respect there. Who would you not invite to your Thanksgiving dinner? The uh, the McCready family or the Swindell family? <laughs> uh, probably neither, really. 
Um, not not out of disrespect, but uh, I just I look at Thanksgiving as probably uh, more of a family thing. Oh right. boy, nice recovery, Brad. <laughs> wow, you learned some politics there, partner. That was that hey, was. When you're, when, you're, when you're promoting a racetrack, you can't rub anybody the wrong way. Right. You gotta keep everybody happy. Yes, there we go. Perfect. That is awesome. <laughs> well, buddy, it's been great to. It, it sounds so old, and I'm sorry about this. But it's, it's been great to see you see you grow up, man. It's yeah. it's fantastic what you're doing. I mean, three times, three times in a row, the world of outlaws in a machine that still we can't fathom how you can control on a freaking dirt track. It's it's impressive what you've done and what you continue to do, and really your plans of moving forward, buddy. Yeah, thank you guys. Yep, it's been uh, it's been a heck of a ride, and. Uh, you know, hopefully we'll be catching up in another another year or two and, and uh, having some good conversation again. We need to have more with you. I like yeah. I just like the camaraderie of you guys as a Napa team. I just there's something there that is just really cool. I've, I've noticed over the last couple of years. So, yeah, we need thanks. to do more with you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, guys, for having me on and uh, look forward to seeing you guys again next year. See you at the Chili Bowl, maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> Three timer. Thank you, Brad. Thanks, guys. Three.